Hey, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Patrick. Yeah, um, some uh, brother and sister in the Lord here gave me this Louisiana State University uh, shirt, so I thought I would wear it uh, in honor of uh, my brothers and sisters here in the state of Louisiana. Uh, God bless them in Jesus' name. Uh, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, as I told you, those of you who've been watching my videos, I mentioned the other day that I haven't made many videos since I've been here because the Lord kept speak, keeps speaking to me about judgment. And the Lord has given me several words, and some of them I had shared with a few people. And the Lord is just keeps pressing me about this specific Bible text from Amos chapter 3, uh, basically verse 11 through 15. But uh, I want to read the word that the Lord gave me that I've shared with a few people. I've shared it in the comment sections on a video the other day also. But here's the word of the Lord. Uh, For my hand is heavy against these people. They shall die in their sins because they have rejected me. So shall they reap what they have sown. I shall come in like the flood and destroy them in a moment. My wrath has been kindled. For these stiff-necked people have called my name in vain for they know me not nor my son. They will believe the lie and go into perdition. Now perdition is the word, it's destruction. Into destruction, just like uh, Judas did, the son of perdition and the Antichrist also. I have, and that word is, apol it's the same word as apolio, apostasy, apollyon, the captain over the, uh, the, the, the host, the demons in the bottomless pit. Also, the spirit that will be the, of the beast is Apollyon, Apollo, Apollos. Same root word that we get the word perdition from. Destruction, the destroyer, the Antichrist. Uh, I have sown in faith. Uh, let me, I'm sorry, let me keep reading what the Lord gave me. They will believe the lie. What is the lie? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. The lie is the lie of the Antichrist. I just realized that now <laughs> they will believe the lie. And go into perdition. I've only read over this like once since I wrote it. You know, when the Lord gives me a word, I don't sit there really and meditate on it. I give it to whom the Lord gives it to me. I'm in the middle of this, but let me say this again, brothers and sisters. If you're looking for a word from the Lord, there's lots of people the Lord gave me a word for. And the Lord has been talking to me about being more, he's given me more, um, more fluency. He's letting me be more fluent in giving people words and stuff. So if you're looking for a word uh, from the Lord, um, message me there's lots of times let me move this brothers and sisters it's pretty high up there on my neck uh when you hear about these people like on uh churches that come around and they say they're a prophet and all this stuff and they give people word it's always about prosperity always about money and all this kind of stuff and uh even though the lord can talk to us about those kind of things uh about any topic the lord wants to talk to us about it's usually a word of correction or it's usually a word of oh uh just like Joseph, he had a dream, you know, about his parents and, and his brothers bowing down to him. And then the Lord was showing him his future, that he would be exalted to the right hand of Pharaoh. And that uh, he would have authority over his family as the, you know, the viceroy, as it's called, of the Pharaoh. Anyway, let me go back to this. I shall come in like the flood and destroy them in a moment. My wrath has been kindled for these stiff-necked people I have called my name in vain. For they know me not, nor my son. They will believe the lie and go into perdition. I have sown in faith and reaped in my harvest. The Lord, that's the Lord. Unique is the day of destruction. I will be vindicated on that day and my wrath satisfied. For I am the Lord Jehovah, Yahweh, the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I shall see my word in flesh rising over my creation. Blessed be the Lord God most high, for he is worthy of all praise. Bless his holy name. That's the word, brothers and sisters. Let me read it again because I kept interrupting the word. Like I said, as I was reading it, the Lord was giving me the, uh, the revelation about it. This is really from the Father. As you can tell by what I wrote, it's really from the Father. For my hand is heavy against this people. They shall die in their sins because they have rejected me. So shall they reap what they have sown. I shall come in like the flood and destroy them in a moment. The flood came suddenly. 
My wrath has been kindled. For these stiff-necked people have called my name in vain, for they know me not, nor my son. They will believe the lie and go into perdition. I have sown in faith and reaped in my harvest. What did the Lord sow? Of course, he sowed his son. He sowed his Holy Spirit on this earth. And I reap my harvest. Unique is the day of destruction. The day of the Lord is not just one day, but it's that period of time known as the tribulation period. Unique is the day of destruction. I will be vindicated on that day and my wrath satisfied. For I am the Lord Yahweh, the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I shall see my word, that's Jesus, in flesh, rising over my creation. Blessed be the Lord God most high, for he is worthy of all praise. Blessed be his holy name. All right, brothers and sisters, um, the Lord gave me this text to go along with this. He keeps bringing it back up into my spirit for several days. Uh, I've been, you know, praying about other topics, but the Lord keeps leading me to this text. And the Lord is talking about dealing with Israel in this text. Originally, the northern kingdom, now, lots of you guys have not read your Bible. So what happened in the Bible is that, you know, there became one united country, uh, and under King David, you know, after the time of Joshua, they had the judges and all that, then they kind of broke up and they weren't united. Well, the whole country was united as a nation of Israel under King David. Uh, well, you know, actually Saul, it started getting united and then it was totally united under King David. And then King Solomon, so actually it wasn't that long period of a time, like 80 years that the nation was united. And then because of the sin of King Solomon, everybody talks about how rich and wise Solomon was and all that. And uh, there are people, you know, on the prosperity gospel who honor and, and, and lift up Solomon so much. But Solomon married, uh, disobeyed the law for a king and had all these wives and all these horses, all these things he did to break what the Bible lays out about, the, you know, what the king should do and not do. And he married all these foreign wives and they had foreign religions and he built uh, uh, temples and they call them groves, a grove of trees, um, where they do these different kinds of worship, a maypole, like a modern day, what they call a maypole, uh, an Ashereth pole, to Ashtar and all of this, Ashtoreth and all this different stuff. And I can't really get into all that. You know how I get sidetracked. If I get into all that stuff, how it connects to the New Age and all that, even to the kingdom of Antichrist. Anyway, all these old, same old fallen angels, they have people worshiping them, as Paul tells us, behind every idol is a demon. You know, like the song, behind every, you know, uh, whatever, uh, what is it? I don't remember. Anyway, but this, there's a saying, too, behind every uh, man is a good woman and all that or whatever. Uh, so behind every idol is a demon, the Apostle Paul tells us. It's, it's demon worship. So these uh, powers and principalities, actually fallen angels, uh, is probably a better uh, description of those uh, beings that are behind all these different idols, like the Ashereth Pole, the Groves, uh, all these different things they did. Uh, Baal worship, Moloch, all these different gods. So... Uh, King Solomon actually got involved in all these worship stuff, even after he had built the temple of God. But God honoring David, the man after his own heart, the man that God loved the most uh, for all that he had, you know, such a great worshiper, King David. God promised David because he was such a, a, you know, a great heart and such a worshiper of God. Uh, not because he was a king. That's a whole other video. That, you know, it's just coming into my spirit now. You know, King David was loved by God not because he was a good king or a good warrior, but because he had a heart after, uh, you know, a, a man after God's own heart. And he was a worshiper. God loved and honored David because he was a worshiper. Now, anyway, um, and I can make a whole video about that. It's not the things he did for God, but his personal relationship with the Lord is why God exalted him. And how did God exalt him? He said that there would always be somebody on his throne forever. Of course, that was the Messiah. That's why it's one of the titles they called the Messiah was. You know, they, you know, the blind man outside Jericho cried out to him, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. So a one title for the Messiah in Israel is the son of David. Um, even though that's not a biblical title, that's what the people said. Um, the son of David. Uh, so God honored King David and still honors King David. But his son uh, was very bad, King Solomon. And, and all of his idolatry and all the things, he became a really bad backslider. And uh, because of all of his fame and wealth and wisdom. And uh, God said, I, I will not mess up Solomon because I promised his father and honoring his father, King David. But as soon as Solomon dies, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to split the kingdom. And as soon as Solomon died, 
there's a Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Uh, one of those is the son of, of Solomon. And uh, he argued with the elders of all the different tribes about taxes. And so under the direction of really by what God wanted, and they split the kingdom. And there was the northern tribes, also known as the nation of Israel, and then those, uh, the two southern ones, uh, Judah and uh, part of Benjamin, and they call themselves uh, Judah. Uh, because, of course, it's 90% or plus the Jews, or what we call today the Jews, from the tribe of Judah. Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. Now, these northern kingdoms, also known as Israel, they never honored God, and they never had revival from the very beginning. They tried to, uh, the, the first king they had, he tried to replace uh, Jerusalem as the place of worship. He didn't want his people coming down from Israel and going up to Jerusalem and worshiping there. He wanted them to have their own place. So that's why in Samaria, which later on became known as, you know, their capital, Samaria, he set up, believe it or not, these golden calves or these bulls, just like what the children of Israel had done before when Moses was on top of the mountain. He set up this altar with these idols right off the bat. Now, Amos, who was, uh, you know, really a farmer, you know, of a, of a vine dresser, uh, dealing with the grapes and all that, whatever. Excuse me, he's a farmer. And what Amos did is he was called by God to be a prophet. And then this is one of the prophets of the northern kingdom. And he's referring to the most famous husband and wife team of, of wickedness from the northern kingdom. And that is Ahab and his wife Jezebel. Jezebel is very famous. And uh, now in the southern kingdom, the most evil, wicked king they had was wicked king Manasseh. Uh, in the northern kingdom, the most wicked one really was the wife Jezebel of Ahab. Now she, Jezebel was a Canaanite. And she's the daughter of the, of the king of this other country. Now, he married her. He shouldn't have done it. But anyway, brothers and sisters, this is all connected to the Antichrist. It's all connected to what's going on right now. Anyway, uh, as an example, uh, the spirit of Jezebel is really the spirit. As I made a video a few months ago when I got back to the Philippines. So that was in December. The Lord had showed me really that the spirit of the United States is the Jezebel spirit. We're talking about just like what I, you know, what the Lord had led me to write about the book. You know, Satan's plan for the ages is the is has a capstone to it. Just like God's plan for the ages has a capstone that we see Jesus is called the 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 you know the the stone that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. Okay, head of the corner is the King James way of saying a capstone. Jesus is a capstone of God's uh, redemption plan. Now, it's going to happen again, of course, when the Lord returns. This will be all fulfilled and all that. But Satan's plan to stop, you know, the Lord's plan is capstone with the Antichrist. Okay, so the, the capstone of the devil's plan is to bring in the Antichrist. And in order to do that, Satan has to try to block all the work of God. Now, the Lord's work will stop momentarily, as we can see it, when the Bible says when the, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, when the restrainer is moved, is removed. Now, he who now lets will let. So, the restrainer, it tells us, will be removed. And now, the restrainer, there is always, every doctrine you can think of, there's always these French wacky people come up with all kinds of things about who is the restrainer. There is a group of people that think that Archangel Michael is the restrainer. Michael is an angel and he cannot restrain evil. You know, the, the invisible spiritual force of evil. Only the Spirit of God can do that. The restrainer is the Holy Spirit working through the church. When the Holy Spirit through the church is removed, there will be a vacuum. There will be a, a moment in time. As I've made videos in the past, I'm going on about this. I always make a long video, brothers and sisters, because the Lord just keeps dropping it on me. Boom, boom, boom. I made a video a long time ago, and lots of people know about the crossing of the Red Sea with Moses and the children of Israel running, fleeing from Pharaoh. But lots of people do not know that the children of Israel, when they crossed into the Promised Land under Joshua 40 years later, the, the River Jordan was parted for the children of Israel to cross over into the Promised Land. Now, I made a video a long time ago, and the Lord had shown me that you know, right now, Satan is the prince of power of the air. He's the god of this world. And he occupies the second heaven, the first heaven being the atmosphere of the earth. 
The second heaven is the atmosphere outside the atmosphere of Earth all the way up through what we would know and see as outer space. The third heaven outside this dimension beyond space-time and the higher dimension levels on up to whatever, infinity, the third heaven where God is. You can't fly from here to heaven. You cannot you know, get in a spaceship and fly to heaven. You can only go to the third heaven. You can only go through the second heaven, on into nothing. You cannot break out of this dimension that we're in into the dimensions where God is, uh, to the third dimension, where the throne of God is, where heaven is, as we know it, the third heaven. So when the, when, when the Bible talks about how, and I mentioned this in the video, how when Satan is cast to the ground, he knows his time is short, it says. It's Revelation chapter 12. He's cast down to the earth. Now, let me just say this because it's confusing. For one thing, you, people just open up the Bible and start, and never, they never even read the Bible, and the next thing you know, they're interpreting the book of Revelation, which you can have years of study of all the Bible and then not even, still can't even understand the book of Revelation because you have to have a complete, thorough understanding of the whole Bible, and then, only then, by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, leading you and teaching you, can you begin to even have any idea what the book of Revelation is talking about. It's, uh, it can be uh, twisted and changed because all prophecy is like that. It's a parable. It flows in rhymes. And the Bible talks about how God speaks in a mystery, in dark sentences, in secret ways that, uh, you know, as Jesus said, he who has an ear, let him hear. It's not for everyone to hear. For only those who God chooses to hear are spiritually discerned. So anyway, brothers and sisters, uh, the, the book of Revelation is not necessarily in a complete, exact chronological order. Okay? So let me just say that. But when Satan is cast down to earth, which doesn't necessarily happen uh, any particular day within the tribulation, you can't calculate and say, well, chapter 5 happens the first three weeks of the tribulation or whatever, chapter 6 happens here, chapter... It's all happened simultaneously, and, and this, it's not laid out in exact chronological order. It's a general chronological order, but not exact. Say that. It all happens simultaneously. Um, parts of it. It's, it's not laid out in a way that we would say is chronological time line. God doesn't think that way and lay things out. God looks from eternity, not from a, a space-time line that we look at here in the third dimension. Anyway, brothers and sisters, when the Satan is cast down to earth and all of his followers, a third of the stars comes to the earth, that's where we get the idea that a third of the angels rebelled against God from that. And when they fall to the earth, down into this existence, for the tribulation period, there is a moment in time, boom, the, the Jordan River as a metaphor or a type of the second heaven, it's the path is open. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by Him. That way is open. Jesus will open the door. I made a video about this a couple years ago. The Lord has shown me through dreams and visions and Bible verses to see that this is how the rapture would occur, where the, the heavens would part and then you know roll up like a scroll, and we would be able to pass through. Uh, now, the, of course, we can still pass through, but if you were to try to just go to heaven on your own, if you had that ability, um, let me allude back to this. I always make a long video, but you know it's for who it's for. Um, anyway... And Daniel, when, he, when the angel Gabriel came to Daniel, he said, you know, fear not, the, you know, you are highly beloved of God. When you first began to pray 21, years, 21 days ago, I tried to come to you, right? I'm paraphrasing here. But I was withstood by, you know, the prince of Persia withstood me until Michael, the angel, the prince of the nation of Israel, the principality over the nation of Israel, the archangel Michael, he came and, you know, um, was able to remove the hindrance of the prince of Persia so that Gabriel could breakthrough and talk to Daniel. As I mentioned in the video yesterday, there's lots of things going on in the heavenlies that we can't see, don't know about, and the Bible just alludes to these things. So anyway, if, if all of a sudden, if all of us just went up on our own in the rapture to go up, these, uh, you know, principalities and stuff are going to be trying to grab us, get a hold of us. You're going through enemy territory. God has given Satan authority over this earth because, since the fall. He has authority. He is the God of this world. Jesus himself even talked to, said that Satan was the God of this world. You know, this is his world until the Lord returns at the end of the tribulation. Okay, so the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing since the time of John the Baptist. So we're, we're living in a fallen world. We still get sick. We still get diseases. People still murder people, rape people. Uh, people still die. They get sick. We are living in a fallen world. 
which our spirits are renewed, but our physical bodies are not renewed yet until we go to heaven or until, of course, the rapture happens when we'll get our new glorified body. And then when the Lord returns, he'll put an end to all that. Okay, I'm just trying to lay this out so people can understand the theology of it. So we will be called up to meet the Lord in heaven and go through that second heaven. And all the enemy and the, the one-third of the, the angels will be cast down into this realm for that, because he knows his time is short, that seven-year tribulation period. Now let me read this text because I, I've been going all over the place, brothers and sisters, as the Lord has been dropping revelation on me. Those of you who watch my videos, you know how I am. And, and as soon as I, I was going to make this video just about the word the Lord gave me, and the Lord's just dropping this on me. So I always just run with it, brothers and sisters. So anyway, here's the text that the Lord gave me. You can look at the whole chapter of Amos chapter 3, and this is what the Lord is trying to tell me. And it's about Israel, but it's also about the United States, brothers and sisters, about the kingdoms of this world. Right now, the United States is a leader in this world, the only superpower right now, the only superpower on earth. So it's, it's also alluding to the United States and to the kingdoms of this world in general and particularly, of course, to Israel also. It was originally written to the nation of Israel when they had King Ahab and his wife was Queen Jezebel, the most famous woman in the Bible, and Jesus talked to two different churches and said, you know, about Jezebel leading God, leading the church astray, that spirit, a Jezebel spirit, leading the church astray. So if you study about Jezebel, you find out she's the son, uh, she's the daughter of, I believe it's a Canaanite king, and uh, that's where they were introducing all this false religion and all this stuff to, a really bad mistake, and this is the same spirit. You want to trace about the Antichrist? Look at Jezebel, and I haven't even had time to study it. I mean, the, you know, it's just common sense, but the Lord is just dropping it on me right now since I've been making this video. Look at that Jezebel spirit, her origin, where she came from, and I've, like I said, I'm just giving a little, I've forgotten all the details about it since I studied it in school. But anyway, let's look here. Amos chapter 3, uh, the whole thing. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's look at verse 7, Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets, his secret unto his servants, the prophets. I didn't even realize that was in this text. I've forgot, forgotten that was in this chapter. The lion hath roared, and who will fear not? The Lord God has spoken. Who can not? Who can but prophesy? When God speaks, what else can you do but speak what he wants you to speak? Publish in the palaces of Ashdod, in the palaces in the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Syria, Samaria, and behold the great tumults in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land. He's talking about Israel, and shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus says the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwelleth in Samaria in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, says the Lord God, the God, the God of hosts. And that right there is Adonai, Yahweh, the Elohim of Sabaoth. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos, you know that the Lord just keeps pressing in my spirit a couple of weeks ago all about He is the Lord of Sabaoth. This is also in the exact same text. This is also in this text, as the Lord had been giving me that from another text, uh, from Hebrews chapter 12 about the church, uh, the church of the firstborn. Verse 14, that in that day I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him. I will also visit the altars of Bethel. And the horns of that altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house. And the houses of ivory shall perish. And the great houses shall have an end, says the Lord. Now, the, when the Lord first gave me this text the other day, as I mentioned in the video, the Lord, you know, I read that. The Lord just gave me, you know, he told me Amos 3.15 to start with a few days ago. And the Lord had been talking to me about all this judgment stuff. And there, and then I read it, and it says, And the houses of ivory shall perish. And then... The Lord said, what color is ivory? And I, well, I said, Lord, that's white. It's white. So a house that's white shall, be just, shall perish. And that's what the Lord had given me. And then the Lord gave me tonight, verse 11. Uh, Therefore, thus says the Lord, an adversary there shall be, even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength with thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Now, brothers and sisters, I haven't made this video because I don't know what to say about this text. 
and what the you know what the Lord is putting in my spirit about it. Let's look at it in, in the English Standard Version. Let me read the same text again in the English Standard Version. It's a little more easy to understand. Say so I always fall back to the King James as a literal translation, exactly translated. But the understanding is difficult, especially when you're talking Old Testament. Let's see. For the Lord God does nothing, verse 7, uh, the Lord God does nothing without revealing it to secrets to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared, and who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? Proclaim to the strongholds in Ashdod, that's in uh, Gaza Strip, and to the strongholds in the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria, and see the great tumult within her, and the oppressed in her midst. They do not know how to do right, declares the Lord. Those who store up violence and robbery in their strongholds. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, an adversary shall surround the land and bring down your defenses from you, and your strongholds shall be plundered. Thus says the Lord, as the shepherd rescues from the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the people of Israel who dwell in Samaria be rescued by the corner of a couch and a part of a bed. So a remnant will be saved, will be saved, is, is what the Lord is saying in this text about the people of Samaria, as I mentioned the northern kingdoms, also known as Israel. Lots of times God calls them Samaria, and that's their capital city of Samaria, just like when Jesus talked to the Samarians. But those Samarians were, when the, is, when, when, uh, the nation of Assyria, unlike Babylon, when Assyria took a nation, they scattered them, and then they brought different people in. So the people who were, who were in Samaria, there was a little bit of blood from the northern kingdoms, but they were mixed in with these other foreigners that were brought in there. They were mixed breed people. They had a little bit of Israeli blood. They were partial. And, uh, but when the Babylonians took the tribe of Judah into captivity, they kept the people as one nation, and then they allowed them to come back at the end of time, whoever wanted to come back. So it was different. The, Babel, uh, the Assyrians would scatter people on purpose to a new land and put them in exile and split them up and spread them out. That's how they call them the lost tribes of Israel. They were scattered to the four winds. But God uh, delivered a remnant, he's saying here. Okay. Uh, verse 13. Hear and testify against the house of Jacob, declares the Lord God, the God of hosts, or as I said in the, in the Hebrew, it says, declares Adonai, Yahweh, the Elohim of Sabaoth, the Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts of the army of God, that in that day I will punish Israel for, her, for his transgressions. I will punish the altars of Bethel, which is the house of God, same place where Jacob had his dream. And the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. Authority and strength will be removed. The horn represents the authority, the strength, the leadership, the kingdom will be cut off and fall to the ground. I will strike the winter house along with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall come to an end. Uh, King Ahab had built, can you imagine how many elephant tusks it would make to make a house? But uh, King Ahab had a house made of ivory, the Bible tells us, uh, with ivory walls in it, and it was destroyed. So and ivory is white, brothers and sisters. Ivory is white, as the Lord had asked me, what color is it? So... Brothers and sisters, I read that prophecy that the Lord had given me, the words that the Lord had given me, and now I've read this. And the Lord had given me several other words that, I, that I'd written down uh, in messages I'd sent to a few people personally as the word had come to me as I was messaging with someone, and I gave them the word. And I need to go back and find them as the Lord would lead me to give those again. Brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to tell you, and what I believe the Lord is trying to tell me to tell you, is that... You know, the destruction is coming. The judgment of the Lord is coming, a.k.a. also known as the tribulation period. And we, brothers and sisters, those of you who are watching this who are Christians, we need to tell people, like Joel, those Joel Osteens and the like, uh, who are just tickling people's ears. All the people that message me say, you know what, I've got a great church but they don't never talk, they never talk about the end times. They never talk about the tribulation. They never talk about the rapture. They love their church, but they don't have altar calls. They love their church, but they're not talking about the word sin. They never use the word sin. They never use the word repent. The church I was an altar worker in while I was going to Bible school, their Assemblies of God church, the pastor there never used the word sin and never used the word repent. They always use these words like, oh, we've all made mistakes. We've all, uh, you know, they use these words like mistake. Uh, uh, well, I can't remember right off the top of my head the words they use, but they don't use the word sin. 
You know, they don't use the word repent. You know, they, they never use that talk about repentance. So the Lord forgives us when we repent. When we repent. As I, you know, guys, I get on this all the time. Uh, I'll the greasy gracers, but there's probably a few watching this video right now. Uh, by the grace of God, may they be set free. 1 John 1, 9. It's talking to the, as two Christians, as a matter of fact. They'll read the letter of 1 John. It is written to the church. And John says, if we, 1 John 1, 9, if we, Christians, confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So when you sin, you have unrighteousness that makes you dirty and you need to be cleansed when we confess our sins to the Lord, when we repent, when we tell the Lord, hey, Lord, I had pride yesterday. Hey, Lord, I looked on a woman with lust. Hey, Lord, I was covetousness of my neighbor's car, whatever it may be. We repent of our sin, brothers and sisters. Then he forgives us. Just like when Jesus tells the parable of the servant who owed a big debt, and then the master forgave him of his debt. And then another servant owed him money, and then he didn't forgive him of his debt. So that's a, that's a parable that Lord told about forgiveness, forgiven seven, you know, to forgive people seven times, 70 times a day. But the part I want to emphasize to you is that the servant who owed money to his master went, Jesus said, and begged the master to give him time to repay the debt. And then the master felt sorry for him and said, you don't even have to repay me the debt. I forgive you of your debt and wash away, remove your debt. But he didn't do that until the servant came in, asked him, and begged him, and beseeched him, and sought him and said, Master, please, I don't have the money to pay you. Don't throw me into jail, to debtor's jail. Uh, give me time to pay you. And then the master, after he had asked, the master said, Okay, I just cancel your debt. I forgive you of your debt. But he had to ask first. That's the point. We must repent of our sins. We must stay repentant because the sudden destruction is coming like the flood. When the flood happened, it's, and it says in the Bible, they, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh like travail upon a woman, that's a woman going into labor, and they shall not escape. God says they will not escape. There is no escape. Hey, when the door to the ark was closed, and then seven days later, they even had seven days time period, the flood, the water, the rain started. It says water came up out of the ground. The, you know, the depths was broken. As a matter of fact, if, if you look at geology, you will see around the earth, it's like the, you know, the zipper line on a baseball. The earth has a, uh, this uh, ridge, like a baseball, uh, you know, a zipper on it, stitching under the ocean all the way around the world. A physical, visible sign of where the water came up from the deep. And then the Lord opened up, you know, the end of that. Uh, the world was like a greenhouse before. And it was a whole different thing. There was no rain. Water came up out of the ground in the mist and watered the earth. God changed the whole geology of the earth with the flood. Though It says the water came up from the deep, as I just mentioned. And then the, God took this, uh, you know, it was like a vapor uh, wall or a vapor uh, sphere around the earth. God released that and changed the environment. And all this water came. There had never been rain. It came suddenly. That's the point I'm trying to tell you, not to get into all these uh, cool points about it or whatever information, but it suddenly happened. And no one had ever seen it before. They were like, what is going on? It is water falling from the sky. What is this? Hey, what's going on? Water came up from the deep. It was sudden. There was no escape. There was sudden destruction. Sudden destruction, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. There was a sudden, sudden, sudden destruction. And the Lord is, you know, I can just preach it all day long. But the Lord is pressing me to tell you, brothers and sisters, that the word is suddenly, 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 suddenly means like I was just chilling and boom. It just boom. It just happens. Just boom like that. Now that is the word for the for the backslidden, for the lost, for the laid back, for the chilling out. For those virgins who are asleep and don't have enough oil in their lamp, suddenly, suddenly at the midnight hour, the bridegroom, the word will be, you know, the cry will go out that behold, the bridegroom cometh. And those who are not ready will not go into the wedding supper of the Lamb, but they'll be cast into a bed of tribulation. 
also known as the Day of the Lord, the Jehovah's strange work, uh, uh, you know, the wrath of the Lamb. It's known as the time of Jacob's trouble, all about God dealing with Israel to accept Yeshua HaMashiach as their Messiah and the Gentiles to believe the lie, this stiff-necked, hard-hearted, uh, uh, arrogant, uh, effeminate people effeminate men and Jezebel women will be cast in to the tribulation period and they shall believe that strong delusion. The Bible says in second Thessalonians chapter two, that God himself will send a strong delusion that they will believe in the real text. It says the lie. They will believe the lie. What is the lie? The lie that the beast is the Messiah, that if they take the mark of the beast, they will live forever in paradise on earth paradise restored, that they'll live for a thousand years and rule and reign with the Antichrist and become superman and superwomen and become a god. The message of the Antichrist, guess what, is the new age message, but actually it is the old age message from the Garden of Eden that when God knows when you eat this fruit, when you eat from the tree of knowledge and good of evil, you will become like God, you will become a god you will be a God. You will be equal with God when you take this knowledge, when you take the mark of your own free will and accept the mark of the Antichrist. You will condemn your soul to hell forever. There's no turning back. There's no repentance. That's the end. Game over, as uh, what's his name? Bill Paxton said in the original movie, I believe it's Aliens. Game over, man. Game is over when you take the mark of the beast. No turning back. No repentance. No redemption. You are like the fallen angels who slept with the daughters of men. There is no repentance. You'll be like Esau who sought repentance with tears, but none was given. Type of those who take the mark. I'm going to pray for you right now. I've been preaching. You know, and, and the Lord always leads me because it's, you know, there's always that hope. When you've got a breath on this earth, you haven't taken the mark. The rapture hasn't happened. Even if the rapture happened, there's still hope to be saved. If you can endure until the end of the tribulation and not take the mark. And give your heart to the Lord today. Until you take the mark or until you die, there's always hope. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Let's pray right now. Now look, brothers and sisters, those of you who are watching this. Now, you know, it's not, you know, don't preach to the choir. The purpose of preaching to the choir is for you guys to go out there and tell people, hey, judgment is coming. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord is going to forcefully advance his will. God's been letting us waller around here and roll around in our own free will. But guess what? When the tribulation starts... Free will, take the mark or get your head chopped off. Free will is going to be over. It's going to be get off the fence. No more fence riding. No more backsliding. You think a backslider is going to not take the mark and not get saved and get their head chopped off as a non-believer? The ultimate fool would do that. At least if you took the mark, you, you could have fun for a season for people. But to not take the mark because you're against the man and you're your own boss and you're your own, you know, the captain of your own ship, and you're, you know, as all of these people are going around, uh, uh, you know, uh, as the captain of their own destiny, there will that that's going to be that's what the tribulation period is all about. God is saying, deal or no deal today. This is your last chance. Either go get your head chopped off, take, uh, give your heart to the Lord, and then get your head chopped off, or die in one of the earthquakes, tsunamis famines, wars, uh, you know, nuclear wars, famines, diseases, and all that. Or, you know, take the mark and be condemned to hell forever. That's what's coming. Once the rapture happens and the tribulation begins, that's your choices. You, you, you can't sit around and, and continue the way you're going. The, the, it's a dead end road, dead end ahead. There will be no more uh, uh, living life as you know it. Life as we know it. That's why they say end of the world as you know it. It is the end of the age. As you know, Jesus said, I'll be with you always low to the end of the eon, the end of the age, the end of the church age. The Lord is with his people. Then we'll be with him 
in heaven during the new age. So the new age people are right when they say a new age. It is a new age. The age of the kingdom of Antichrist when the Antichrist will rule and reign on this earth for a seven year period until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. There will be all the rules on earth will be totally changed. If you want to know what's going to happen, what I, besides what all the Bible says, go listen to these new age gurus. Go listen to all this wacky stuff they're talking. That's what they're going to be telling people. That's what's going to be going on. The new age movement will become the world religion. That you are a God. God is within you. Go If you want to know what the Antichrist is going to be preaching and what the false prophet is going to be preaching, minus that there's one individual like the Maitreya, as an example, who thinks, you know, this fallen angel or demon spirit, fallen angel spirit, who thinks he will be the Antichrist when he's not. But that is, the, you know, the same words that the Antichrist will be using, that you can become a God. Listen to these New Age people. That's going to be the message of the Antichrist. Not about as much, so much about also him being God, but that you yourself can become like God, like Satan told Eve in the garden. Go listen to what they say. You'll have an exact uh, idea of what's going to be going on during the tribulation. Lying, deceiving, lying signs and wonders. That's what's coming, brothers and sisters. Let's pray. Let's pray for our lost loved ones that the Lord will give them another chance. We know that they've rejected the Lord a hundred times. You know, and it's not us to uh, get them saved, and it's not us to condemn them to hell. It's all in the hands of the Lord. Let's pray about it, brothers and sisters. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God, Lord, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask, Lord, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask you to move upon the hearts of the lost, Lord God, our relatives, our friends, Lord, we ask you to move upon their hearts that they would be saved in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that they've rejected you many times. We know, Lord, all the bad things they've done, Lord God. And Lord, we were also once lost in sin until you took us in, Lord. You saved us. You redeemed us. You called us unto yourself, Lord God. Father, we ask you, Lord, Lord, to, by your grace and by your mercy, Lord, and we are your children and we ask you for our sake, Lord, as your children, Lord, we beseech thee, we petition you, we ask you, Lord, to give our friends and relatives another chance, Lord God. We ask you, Lord, that you would make a way, Lord God, that they would have another opportunity to choose to serve you and follow you, Lord. Lord, give them a clear mind from drugs, alcohol, depression, mental illness, demon possession, Lord, let them have a clear mind, Lord, that they would have an ear to hear the gospel so they can have a complete, fair playing field, Lord. I think that's the right thing to ask, Lord. Lord, let all people, all of our relatives, all of our friends, have a clear playing field, Lord. You know everything, Lord, if, if they've had opportunities in the past. We don't know everything, Lord. And Lord, we pray that they would have a, a fair shot to hear the gospel with a clear mind one more time, Lord as if they had the mind of a child, Lord God, in the heart of a child, Lord. All those calluses on their heart, all that uh, burn scar tissue of all their sin and hard-headedness and evil and wickedness, Lord. Lord, just pierce through all that calluses, Lord, in their heart. Lord, and give them a childlike opportunity one more time, Father, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord God, for them to hear the gospel. Lord, I pray that every Christian that is watching this video would be on revived, Lord. Lord, I asked for revival to come upon your people, Lord God. That your people will be set on fire, Lord God, to help bring in the harvest this final push. Our last mission, Lord God, to do your will in Jesus' name, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, that's the whole thing. That's why the Lord sent me back to the States. To proclaim this word that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that destruction is at hand, the rapture is at hand, to wake up the lost and dying, to wake up the backslider and to bring revival to God's children, to the Christians, to bring revival to the Gentile church. God sent me as a light to the Gentile church. There's lots of people on YouTube who, who are even wearing yarmulkes and, and speaking Hebrew words. They're not, even, they're not even Hebrew. They got a little bit of Hebrew blood and, you know, and they found out, hey, I got, uh, you know, I had a grandpa that's Jewish and now suddenly they're speaking Hebrew and wearing a yarmulke and, and a pair of shawl. God is calling to the fullness of the Gentiles. It's time for the Gentile, final Gentiles to come into the kingdom. 
so that the tribulation period can begin, so the rapture can happen, the 144,000 witnesses from Israel can come forward as soon as we're out of here. And we've got to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the whole world, Jesus said. When the gospel of the kingdom is preached to every nation, then the end shall come. When the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, then the end shall come. We've got a work to do, a mission to do. Maybe it's one more person. Maybe it's a million more people. Maybe it's 10 million more people. I don't know. Maybe it's just one more person. I have no idea. Only the Lord knows. He says every hair on our head is counted, the Lord Jesus Christ said. So surely he knows the number of people that will fulfill the church, the, the age of the Gentiles. Brothers and sisters, the Lord sent me as a light to this Gentile church here in the United States in English-speaking countries that it's time, it's high time. It's beyond high time. Summer has passed. The day is over. The day is far spent, and we are not saved. The winter is coming. Darkness is coming. And Jesus said when darkness comes, no man can work. Today is the day to work. We need to, as they say, make hay while the sun is shining. As my grandpa was a farmer, and that's what he used to say. you got to make hay while the sun is shining. Brothers and sisters, we have twilight minutes. Twilight minutes. You want your relatives to get saved? You reap what you sow. You want your relatives to hear the gospel? Go give the gospel to someone else. You need mercy? Go sow mercy. You want your relative to be healed who's sick? Go to the hospital and pray for somebody who's sick. Go sow what you need to reap. Go do what it is that you need done in your life. Go do for others. What you've done for others, God will do for you. You reap what you sow. Go be a blessing and God will bless you. God told Abraham, I, may, I blessed you to make you a blessing. God gives us wisdom. God, like me, if I'm just sitting around here and I'm, and I'm not reading, you know, I'm not ministering to anybody, God doesn't anoint me to make a video unless I'm making a video. God doesn't anoint me. A lot of people are Dead Sea Christians. They're, you know, they're taken in, but they're not given out. You know, it's the end of the line. We're supposed to be like the Sea of Galilee, where water, the River Jordan flows into the Sea of Galilee, and then it flows out the bottom of the Sea of Galilee. The water, it's a, it's a living water, unlike the Dead Sea, where water flows in and nothing comes out. That's why it's the Dead Sea. Everything, you know, it's so full of salt and minerals and all that, nothing can survive. Lots of people also on YouTube are so full of salt, you know, they're too salty. You know, we've got to be salty, but when, you know, if you put too much salt on your food, you can't eat it anymore. So you're supposed to be seasoned with salt. Season your words with salt, the Bible says, and not be a Dead Sea. It's, you know, it's six times more concentrated than the ocean. You imagine drinking water, you know, uh, if you, lots of people have been to the beach, you taste that water, is pretty salty. Imagine six times more where you can, Dead Sea, you can even float on top of the water, so full of minerals. Anyway, brothers and sisters, don't be like the Dead Sea Christians. Be like the Sea of Galilee. Let the anointing flow through you and to others. Be, receive the blessing so you can be a blessing. You know, God will anoint you. People want to have an anointing. They tell me they want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They want to, you got to have a prayer, God if you fill me with the Holy Spirit, I'll go out here and proclaim the gospel to people. I'll go to the hospital and lay hands on the sick. You know, God anoints us for a purpose. The anointing is for His glory, not for just our, us to, you know, wallow around and, and say, oh, I'm wallowing around in the glory of God. No, but that you would be a blessing. God would make you an instrument of righteousness in His hand. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to get off of here because, you know, I'm limiting the people that will see the video by the length of it. God bless you guys. You know that I love you guys. Those who are my fellow Christians, we've got things to do, brothers and sisters. We've got to get out there and, you know, and make hay while the sun's shining. The Lord wants to use us. The Lord doesn't need us. We need Him. And He wants to use us. This is your rewards in heaven. This is for your uh, uh, lost loved ones. This is for your opportunity to be conformed to the image of Christ. The, Jesus doesn't need us. Actually, you know, he can send angels. The Lord himself can appear in the sky and start talking to people. He can appear to people in dreams and visions. He can do whatever he wants to do. But he chose to give us an opportunity to be part of the kingdom, to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. God bless you guys. I'll see you on the other side, if not sooner. I'll see you in Dallas. We're pushing for 20 orphans. We're over 15 orphans now. I ask you to pray for that. Thanks to all who have been donating. That, you know, it's never enough, you know, because the needs of every kid and, and everything as we're growing Joshua's ministry, the orphanage and planning for two more orphanages and all the feeding programs. Hey, and, you know, all the uh, expenses of visiting these places. I'll be in Dallas uh, the 20th and 21st. There. I'm in Louisiana now. 
Um, I have some open time in Dallas on the 20th and 21st. Um, if you want to see me there in Dallas, uh, brothers and sisters, many more people have invited me to different places. I don't have time. By the grace of God, and as the Lord will provide, I will go to all those places when I come back in May. By the grace of God, to bring revival, to bring healing and deliverance and pray with people. As I, the Lord has allowed me to do and continue to do, uh, brothers and sisters in, from Florida, uh, Northern California, uh, all, all across uh, almost every state. I don't know where all. People have invited me out, maybe every state. I don't know. And by the grace of God, I'll be able to see all of you guys as the God would provide me the strength, the energy, the finances, everything. God bless you guys. Um, be ready. Be ready against the third day. Be ready to meet the Lord. Because, he, you know, the tribulation is going to suddenly start. But before that, the rapture will suddenly happen. For those of you, it's a sudden, it's just going to be boom, guys. I can't, you know, the Lord keeps putting that word in my spirit. This whole video is suddenly, 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 suddenly. It's just boom. It's just going to be boom. It's just going to happen. Boom. Without warning. Boom. That's it. The Lord is coming as a thief in the night. He's going to be boom. He's going to be. The rapture is going to be upon us in the twinkling of an eye, brothers and sisters. And boom, that's all she wrote. You can't go evangelize anybody anymore. You can't say, oh, I'm going to take a day off work and go to the hospital and pray for people. You won't be able to do that. It's already passed. It's already passed. And you're going to be standing there in front of the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, you know, Lord, I will, uh, you know, you know, uh, I was going to, but, you know, oh, uh, no, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's true. I'm sure there'll be things, because the Bible says we have to give an account to everything to the Lord. It's talking about the judgment seat of Christ, fire rewards and all that. I'm sure I'm going to be the same way. But there's lots of you that's going to be much more explaining to do. They'll be like, you know, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. You know, there's lots of explaining to do. You know, so there's going to be lots of explaining to do. And, uh, you know, everyone's going to be standing there. And the Bible says we'll be ashamed before the Lord. And everybody's going to be watching you. And me. I imagine you stand before the Lord. He's going to be looking you in the face when you're there at the judgment seat of Christ, asking you, well, you know, why didn't you give to help the poor? You know, why, you know, you had the money. I already spoke to your heart to give this money to feed poor people, and you didn't do it. You know, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. And the Lord's going to be looking you right in the eye, and then there's the heavenly host, all the angels, the, the Father, and us, the church, will be standing there listening and looking. As Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father and his angels. I mean, you know, we're going to be there in front of the whole heavenly host. Hebrews chapter 12, that's Mount Zion, the church of the firstborn. We will be there with the angels and all that and all the saints who died before us. We're going to be there. And we're going to be looking at you and, look, and people will be looking at me when it's my turn. And everybody's going to hear it. And we're going to be ashamed and naked. In the presence of the Lord, uh, as He would uh, judge us for the things we've done with what He's given us. To whom much is given, much is required. You know, so whatever God has given you, whether it be finances, whether it be a good ability to speak, whether it be you know some gift of the Spirit or whatever, you will be judged on how you used it. Just like the parable of the talents and all that stuff. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This is for Christians. Now the backsliders, hey, get back right with God. The lost get saved. For the mature Christians who are probably the only ones watching this video, of course, especially after the first five minutes, you know, we have to give an account to the Lord. That's what it's all about. I mean, for for us mature Christians, uh, we're going to be looking like a, you're going to be, you know, just think if, if I had to face the Lord today and give an account for everything I've done since I've been a Christian and give an account for what I've done with my money, my time, my talent, my treasure, as they say, what can I say? You know, what if, it, as an example, like Joshua's ministry, like me, the Lord told me to try to, you know, to build three orphanages, and we only got one, and then the money comes in to build a second one, and I don't do it. And then I was like, well, Lord, I was, you know, I was waiting until I made sure we had enough money or whatever, but we did. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's that kind of thing. Or, you know, there was one kid that I wanted to be in the orphanage, and then you didn't get him, and then why didn't you do it? Whatever. You know, these are the things that we have to answer to the Lord for as for our rewards in heaven. So, brothers and sisters, God bless you. It's very serious. It's going to be sudden. You know, do it today. I, I know I say this in 100 videos. Do today what you would do if you knew the rapture was tomorrow. Don't put off to tomorrow what you may not get to do. God bless you guys.